Police are calling it an appalling and sickening attack. And just a few minutes ago, British Prime Minister Theresa May upped the terror threat level in that country, saying another attack may be in the works. Now, here's the latest information that we have. Police have identified the attacker as Salman Abedi, a 23-year-old man known to British authorities. Investigators say he exploded a homemade bomb in a public concourse as fans of the Ariana Grande concert left the Manchester Arena. 22 people are dead, nearly 60 are wounded. Investigators think the bomb was filled with shrapnel. We have team coverage tonight. KBOI 2 Scott Logan has a reaction from a local terrorism expert. But first, KBOI 2's Amika Asumi explains what we've learned about some of the victims. Well, Brett and Natalie, many of the killed and injured were children, including this eight-year-old girl. Sophie Safi Russos was killed in the bombing. Her mother and sister were among the wounded. Her high school principal, her school principal called her a beautiful little girl. Also killed 18 year old Georgina Callender. The college student was a huge fan of Ariana Grande. She took this photo with the singer during Grande's last Manchester concert two years ago. Some children are still missing. Their parents desperately pleading for more information. I've tried all the hospitals and no one's got her on record of being there yet. Um, I'm waiting for a phone call back from the police. Her daughter Olivia was last seen with her friend who was injured and taken to a hospital. Of the dozens injured, some were reportedly paralyzed by the blast. Today, witnesses are describing the horror of those few moments. We heard the, the, the blast and didn't know what it was, but straight away she said, um, is it terrorists? Are they, are they coming to get us? Um, you know, are, are we going to die? Thousands turned out for a vigil this afternoon in the city. In London, Queen Elizabeth and Prince, Prince Philip stood for a moment of silence. The Queen released a statement saying the whole nation has been shocked by the death and injury. Police have arrested a 23-year-old man in connection after the blast and raided a home in the city. ISIS has claimed responsibility for the bombing, but U.S. officials have not confirmed it was their work. In the studio, Amiko Sumi, KBOI 2 News. Well, there has been a string of violent attacks in Europe over the past few months. In fact, the Manchester bombing comes two months to the day after another tragedy in England. In late March, six people were killed, including an American, near the Palace of Westminster after a man drove a car through a crowd of people. The driver was shot and killed by police. In December, 12 people were killed after a truck barreled through a Christmas market in Berlin, Germany. New at four, a local expert in uh, counterterrorism is praising the quick work of authorities in England following the attack. But stopping such attacks, that's another matter. KBOI 2 Scott Logan is live in the newsroom to tell us why preventing them is so hard. Mike Baker, a former CIA operative, says authorities cannot stop all of the attacks on these so-called soft targets, but he says people attending crowded concerts or other events can increase their own personal security by paying more attention to their surroundings, increasing what's called situational awareness. As a former CIA operative, Mike Baker has worked closely with the British versions of the FBI and CIA in counterterrorism operations. And they're extremely professional. They're very, very good at what they do. Unfortunately, they've had a lot of experience. Uh, and they actually worked very quickly on this. I mean, from the time of the attack, which is about 10.30 p.m. their time in the evening, it took them about eight hours or so to identify the attacker and to then start getting a hold of associates of the attacker, people that know him or knew him, and then also to start tagging and identifying addresses. But Baker says stopping terror attacks, such as the one in Manchester, is a very different matter. You can't stop every single one of them. It's never going to happen. You do the best you can to minimize and disrupt and prevent, but you're never going to get to a zero sum on this. He says he believes the attackers picked the arena and the concert for a reason. They don't live in a bubble. They understood that there was going to be this sellout crowd for this, this Ariana Grande concert. And they understood that there's a train station, so what does that give them? That gives them ingress and egress, an easy way out for those that weren't going to be the, 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 the attacker. And he urges people out in public to keep their eyes open. Just raise your awareness a little bit. No one's going to stay on high red alert all the time. But just be aware and understand your operating environment as you go around. But yes, it can happen anywhere. 
we reached out to different concert and sports venues in the Treasure Valley to see if the Manchester attack has them rethinking any way, in any way their own security. We'll let you know what they say when they get back to us. Live in the newsroom, Scott Logan, KBOI 2 News. Scott, thank you. Now stick around for more on the attack later in this newscast. Coming up in about 20 minutes, you'll hear why experts are worried the Manchester attack could signal a new shift in terrorist strategy. Also, make sure to follow our coverage online at IdahoNews.com and our KBOI 2 News mobile app.